Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today I have a question that's been bouncing around in my mind for the last couple weeks, and that's um, what operating systems should kids learn? Why does that matter? I was talking to my assistant director one day, and he was telling me about his kids and how one of them, uh, in this school district, the device that they give out to all the kids are Chromebooks and how he was going through and showing her different things. And he was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and save this file and you can just take it back to school. And this was pre the incident that we were going through. You could take it back to school and just, you know, print it there. Well, how do you do that? He was like, huh, that's uh, interesting. And then the school district my kids go to, it's Apple. Everything, teachers have MacBooks, all the kids have iPads on the elementary level, and on the high school and middle school level, I believe, they have um, MacBooks also, and Apple TV, and everything Apple. What operating system do kids really need to know? Because his kids' school district is Chrome. My kids, it's Apple, but in the professional world, it's mostly Windows. So which one's better? Tell you what, let's go ahead and look through the four popular ones. We're not gonna cover any, any of the weird ones like Temple OS or uh, Haiku. Yeah, well, we, we're not gonna, those are very fringe. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it, it, they're, they're fringe. All right, so let's go with the, the big boy, the, the, the OG Windows. Windows has about 80, 82 for, for, this, for this video. Let's say they have 82% of the market which um, a couple years ago they were at 90. And these other competitors have kind of eaten up that ground, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So Windows, Windows is, they're the standard. They are it when it comes to professional environments. We use it where I work at, every place I've ever worked at, it's always been a Windows based device. One other positive about Windows is it works with all programs. Well, most all programs. There's not a program that comes out that I'll say 99.999 because there's some out there that doesn't also work with Windows. The downside, let me tell you about the downside of Microsoft. The downside of Microsoft or Windows is Microsoft. They, I'll take you back to last year. They had an update come out called 1809. What it's called, it is, that's, not, that's not important. The important thing is that when it came out, it started erasing all types of files. We had, where I work at, it was files everywhere. It, it was like, it was some major important people where I work at that computers got wiped out. I mean, started erasing files, it wouldn't turn on or nothing. But one, one particular individual, the computer would turn on. So what happens is it went through and looked for all the programs that had a, uh, a signature. And a signature is, um, it's kind of like a fingerprint on a file. If it was a fingerprint that Microsoft didn't know, it erased all of the files, which that's not odd. The odd thing was it then created a PDF with everything it erased. It was like, hey, look at all this stuff that wasn't signed by people we recognize. And it erased every file that Microsoft didn't recognize. So some proprietary things we had on there, some uh, specialized programs that they needed for their job. So that was a nightmare. We definitely implemented a, a, a solution so that wouldn't happen again. But the updates sometimes that Microsoft sends out and just breaks machines, it's, it's, it's like they were like, hey, we're gonna fix this problem, but we're gonna break it and make another problem so we can put out another, I, I, I don't know if it's, the programmers don't have anything to do and they're just making things fun. That, that's, that's, that's a joke, but still. So the next one is gonna be Mac OS. Mac is a very simple to use operating system along with iOS and its derivatives. With Mac, the, the biggest thing is cost. The software, you can't buy Mac OS and build a computer and put the software on it. And that's the limitation is cost. The hardware is, as far as build quality, it's fantastic. But as far as repairability, it's a nightmare. Apple doesn't want to share schematics. They don't want to help you in any type of way. I think they just came out with a certification, but if you go through the classes, which I did because I was 
going to get Apple certified. A lot of things that I would take on and fix myself, it was, oh, tell the person if, if you have this issue that it's very fixable. Sorry, just tell them that you don't have to buy a new one. It's an unfixable problem, fine. Anyway. And then really, I, I fixed this problem before, but that's Apple. They do have about 10% of the market. So the last couple of years, because of they do build a, a quality product and they have a, a very loyal fan base because once once Apple gets you in their ecosystem, they, they, they'll tell you, hey, we sold you a phone. You know, it works well with the phone, this MacBook. You know what works well with this MacBook and you, you want to do some streaming? Apple TV. So they suck you in this ecosystem. If they get you, they got you. They do a good job of that. So they have 10% in the market, so they're getting more popular. Chrome OS. Chrome OS is similar to Mac as you can't buy Chrome OS and put it on a separate workstation that you build or if you want to erase an operating system on a computer, it won't let you do that. It's tied to a specific piece of hardware. Um, they are cheaper because it doesn't take a lot to run uh, Chrome OS. They're very lightweight. Uh, the only thing is to take full advantage of Chrome OS the internet is key. You don't necessarily have to have the internet because you can download these things called packaged apps. You can download them and have, but the Chromebook isn't the same without the internet. So it's very internet uh, uh, dependent. And that's the downside of that. And the, uh, the odd child of the group is gonna be Linux. Linux is, it's one of my favorite operating systems. One, it's free. You know I like them cheap. You know I like cheap things, and even free is better. But free isn't always good, but in this case, it is. Linux runs a lot of things you use today. Android, as far as the, the phone is based off Linux, a lot of servers that um, use your information or process data or email servers or anything important on the internet, nine times out of 10, or eight times out of 10, it's gonna be a Linux machine because Linux is very powerful. Two downsides of Linux. One, they have gotten better as far as the GUI, the graphical user interface, and that's how you see things because the way the computer really works is, it's a bunch of, man, that's neither here nor there. A lot of the more powerful features in Linux, you have to go to a command prompt and do all that so a lot of people if you're not technical Linux isn't really a, uh, a thing you can use on a professional level to get the most out of and the second thing is they have so many different distributions a distribution is like ice cream ice cream is one thing but you can have chocolate strawberry cookies and cream they're all ice cream but they're different so you have all these different kinds of they call them distros you have all these different kinds of distros for linux and it's it can get complicated at times trying to learn each one because they all of them have their little nuances to them like this one does it one way because it's based on this type of system then it's, you have another distro of linux and it does something completely different so what operating system after we went through all that what operating system is the best for kids to learn all of them and then none of them. What do I mean? Because the little nuances as far as signing into a computer and getting to the getting on a browser. Because most things that kids are doing today are web-based, cloud-based things. Just like my assistant director's child didn't know how to retrieve a saved file on her Chromebook. My kids don't know how to retrieve a save file on an iPad because that's not how they interact with these things. Everything that they do is web-based. So if it's Windows, Mac, Linux, or Chrome OS, if they can get to a browser, 90% of what they have to do, maybe even higher, is done. Because things like games and workplace applications and just generally, Almost everything we do is browser based. So it doesn't really matter which ones they use. If they do get one, if they do like one, stick with it. Here's my kids now. How's it going guys? You guys caught me in the middle of doing a video. Oh. Let's see. What you guys up to? I'm gonna talk to my kids real quick. I'll, I'll be back. Okay, that was uh, fun. We had a nice little 
conversation. So just in conclusion, the way that productivity and education and learning is going, it's becoming less and less important what operating system you use. I would say find something that the kids like, find something that you can afford and use that one. They'll learn the ins and outs and the little details as they go along. Any of the operating systems are good. One, the three questions you have to ask is how difficult it is for them to learn it, how much is it gonna cost you, and how easy it is if there's an issue to remedy it. And those are the three things that you should consider with all things that you purchase. Thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Uh, tell me why you didn't like it. Uh, I'm always open to feedback. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.